Western society in general over the last 200 years has privileged, and there have been massive studies done on this, has privileged left brain thinking, that is close up analytic reasoning, kind of chartered accountancy thinking if you like, rather than um, big picture uh, music, metaphor, faith, imagination thinking, which has been regarded as a kind of a leisure activity for those who fancy that sort of thing, but then we come back to reality, which is the small-scale processing. And I think that's been deeply unhealthy. One of the biggest books on this recently, Ian McGilchrist's book, The Master and His Emissary, argues that what happens when the two brain hemispheres get separated is schizophrenia. And if somebody is running simply on the left hemisphere, there are certain signs of what happens. And he argues then at great length that that has happened and is happening in Western culture, which is precisely regarding the imagination as uh, the leisure activity which won't actually be necessary for the real task, but it's just kind of fun if you want to, to use it. And he argues strongly that instead we ought to try in all ways we can to reverse that and to privilege the imagination and the arts and music and, uh, and metaphor over against the rather boring, flat rationalism of, of the small scale. So I think that's gone on and is going on. And I should say, by the way, I, I gave a lecture incorporating some of this stuff in St. Andrews two or three years ago. And there was a leading brain scientist in the audience who took me aside afterwards and said, it's not quite as easy as that. So I'm, just in case there are brain scientists here, I'm well aware <laughs> that there are always academic wrinkles to be had and footnotes, but this is the, the layman's broad brush uh, version of I, it. I wasn't going to say No, well, of course, thank you. Uh, it's, it's kind of you. Um, but I think, so, so it, it's, it's not just that we can't imagine the future. I think that imagination has been uh, diminished throughout our society. And I think particularly because in my world, and I suspect yours, so much of our society, we, we, we've lived with these two things. Peter talks rightly about this dystopia idea of, oh my goodness, things are getting bad. And I think that go, that's a secular version of what was really a 19th century worldview, which is the, the kind of premillennial worldview that actually the world is getting worse and worse and Satan is taking over and wickedness is happening and we few, we little few who are left uh, maybe have to be snatched away or whatever. And, and that's, that's a very, still a pop popular obviously bit of, of theology in some quarters, but um, I think what we're now seeing is the sort of the, the secular version of that. But that sits awkwardly with the idea of progress, which many people still embrace, and many people still will say, we've got to be on the right side of history or whatever, as though we knew where history... And both of these have inhibited the imagination. Because if, it's, if we know that progress is happening, then, as you say, we just sit back and watch the movie. Um, if we know that dystopia is happening, then we find a place to huddle and, and, and try and stay safe. So we, we need the imagination to open those horizons.